What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about Tesla's recent acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. I want to talk about why this is such a huge acquisition at such an incredible price, but before I do that, I want to give you some background on Maxwell Technologies and their history. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Maxwell Technologies was founded in 1965 as a government contractor, and in the early 2000s, they started making these ultra capacitors, and that has been their primary source of business. But over the last couple of years, they've started working on a new product called Dry Battery Electrode Technology, or DBE, for lithium ion batteries. Since Maxwell is a publicly traded company, there is some very nice documentation on the development of this particular technology, DBE. We see the first mention of DBE in Q4 of 2018's earning release when they say, successfully completed the dry battery electrode proof of concept technology program, achieving an energy density milestone of approximately 300 watt hours per kilogram as compared to an average of 250 watt hours per kilogram for current batteries in the market. We get an additional snapshot on their development of DBE in Q1 of 2018's earning release when they say, we have developed and transformed our patented proprietary and fundamental dry electrode manufacturing technology that we have historically used to make ultra capacitors to create a breakthrough technology that can be applied to the manufacturing of batteries. In Q2 of 2018's earning release, we receive a little bit more color on this idea. In demand in the markets we serve is growing. We continue to make excellent progress with our dry battery electrode technology development and strategic partnership discussions. And our overall strategy is playing out as intended. They continue on a little bit further down in the earnings release of this same Q2 2018 by saying we anticipate the need for a minimum of 15 million in incremental capital to bridge the company to a recovery to prior revenue levels. We are evaluating our financial alternatives, including the amount we may seek to raise in order to ensure continuity of investment in future growth programs, such as dry battery electrode and energy storage. So you can see that they're starting to sort of build this case for needing more capital to continue this technology that they have a lot of high hope and prospect for. In Q3 2018 earnings, they say, additionally, testing of our dry battery electrode technology is progressing to plan, and we are making headway with potential partners, which should change the long-term dynamics of our business. The company is actively exploring non-dilutive funding opportunities that will provide the necessary resources to fund its working capital requirements and fuel investments in research and development, primarily in its dry battery electrode technology solutions, which, which Maxwell believes holds the greatest long-term potential. So that was in Q3 2018. They have not had their Q4 2018 earnings call in summary of 2018. And I think that's because they had been in discussions and finalizing the agreement to be acquired by Tesla. On January 16, 2019, we received the most colored insight into this technology that they've been working on for a couple of years now from a speech that their CFO did at the 21st annual Needham Growth Conference in New York. Addressing the products and markets, uh, which we'll get into more detail in a little bit, we have two main product lines here, energy storage, which is based on our ultrapacitor technology, um, note that our ultra capacitor technology was actually only developed back in the early 2000s, so about 15 years ago, even though the company uh, was actually founded uh, back in 1965. The ultra capacitor technology addresses automotive, grid, rail, rail and wind markets. Um, and basically, for those of you who don't know, uh, ultra capacitors are energy storage and power delivery solutions much like batteries, except with some different properties, uh, whereas uh, batteries are very good at holding energy and not as good at power, uh, or the opposite, very good at power, 
um, not as good as holding energy. Uh, that technology we've leveraged into dry battery electrode technology, which is relatively new um, in terms of uh, a solution, but it's actually based on our ultracapacitor manufacturing process, IP, and trade secret. And we believe the dry battery electrode technology is a revolutionary technology that will change the landscape of electric vehicles, uh, particularly with lithium-ion batteries. Um, the market itself is large. We, we, we all know that um, the, uh, the number of electric vehicles forecasted by 2030 is between 15 million and 30 million. That's a 12x growth or 21% CAGR. Um, there's over one terawatt of lithium ion battery capacity expected by 2030, which just to give you an idea is the equivalent of 25 gigafactories. Um, but there are, there are problems that need to be solved using traditional lithium ion batteries, and that's the energy density needs to double and the cost needs to half. The, uh, the target, uh, the common target you hear out there is $100 per kilowatt hour. Um, and uh, I think um, our dry battery electrode technology, which has been um, proven with our partner uh, through a proof of concept I'll talk about in a minute, shows um, that that patented breakthrough dry battery electrode technology will allow us to capitalize on this megatrend. So over the past many years, as many as, you, as many of you know, um, we partnered with a major global audio, auto OEM to prove out our concept. Um, over the past couple of years, it started with the electrode uh, using materials from uh, the desired materials from our partner. Uh, we constructed electrode that met uh, the requirements um, uh, for future electric vehicles. Um, and um, we've gone to the point where we're building cells and proving those out. Um, we've now proven greater than 300 watt hour per kilogram, um, and we have a path to 500, or actually greater than 500. Um, the other benefit we get from this technology is improved durability. Uh, we can extend the battery life by up to 2x. The cost reductions are significant. If you look at the footprint um, of, a, of a gigafactory, for instance, the, the, around the globe, batteries are made with a wet electro process. That wet electro process requires it to be dried. And so a large part of these factories are large drying ovens. And that costs space, and they cost a, 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 there's a big capex requirement to make that happen. Because ours goes in dry and comes out dry, you don't need to dry them. Um, and that pr proves out to be a pretty significant cost reduction in constructing the factory. Um, we get a 16x production capacity density increase uh, because of that. And that results in about 10 to 20% cost reduction versus state-of-the-art uh, wet electrodes, uh, which is traditional used in tr traditional lithium-ion batteries. Um, all in all, um, we believe that this saves per car on the order of between $200 and $1,000, which is pretty significant um, given the targets that are out there. On the technology enablement and environmental um, uh, front, um, because uh, uh, we're not a wet electro process, we have no solvents. Um, in the wet electro process, the manufacturing facility has to be able to deal with solvents, which are not um, environmentally friendly. We've got um, um, next-gen materials we're using, and we have uh, cobalt-free as a target um, that uh, you'll hear a lot of EV makers talking about. And we also can address and, and, uh, and have advantages on the solid-state side. So hopefully sometime in the next six months here, we, uh, we actually have some good confidence we'll announce a partnership, um, a strategic partnership with a major player. So stay tuned. When do we take Maxwell Technologies dry battery electrode technology that has an energy density of 300 to 500 watt hours per kilogram and we apply that to Tesla's batteries right now, we see a 15 to 50% improvement in range. 
That would equate to a battery range of 385 miles to 502 miles or 620 kilometers to 808. Is it possible that Tesla has done away with the 75 kilowatt hour pack and gone down to a single 100 kilowatt hour battery because they're retooling a production line for this new technology? It's possible. I'd be very curious to see what happens here in the very near future. We also have not received any more clarity than what we already know regarding supercharging V3. So is this acquisition of Maxwell Technologies tied to the introduction of supercharging version three? There is one more reason why Tesla could have potentially acquired Maxwell Technologies. As I mentioned in the very beginning of the video, this company has been doing ultra capacitors since early 2000. As documented as early as 2011, Elon has shared that he thinks that the future of electric vehicles are not in batteries, but in capacitors. Elon's interest in ultra capacitors takes further shape in comments on the topic in a Khan Academy interview. And so the area of, that I was studying was that, um, advanced capacitors. Right, so essentially capacitors that have an energy density um, exceeding that of batteries. Because they have a very high power density, but, but low energy density. Yeah. So we have a lecture to that. Yeah, oh, yes. Yes. No, we should do that. <laughs> no, we'll get later. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, obviously, if you, if you could make a capacitor that had anywhere near the energy density of a battery, and, and with an incredibly high power density and its quasi-infinite cycle and calendar life, then you would have a, an awesome solution for energy storage and mobile applications. Yeah. Um, so that, that I was going to sort of work on that and try to uh, leverage um, the equipment that was developed for advanced chip making and photonics uh, to um, create uh, uh, ultra precise capacitors at sort of at the molecular And this is when level. you were going to go into uh, grad school. Yeah, you, you, exactly. you, you had a brief stint at Stanford. That's right. Yeah. At, at a PhD in applied physics. Uh, applied physics, material science. Right. Yeah. This and is what you were. So even then, you were thinking of kind of trying yeah, to yeah, do exactly. something in the space. Well, 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 actually, this was yeah. This was. To, to work on energy storage solutions for electric cars. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I'd actually worked at a company in Silicon Valley called Pinnacle Research, which did advanced um, capacitors. They were, they were um, electrolytic uh, c capacitors, mm -hmm. sort of, um, and, uh, th but the problem, and, and they actually were pretty good. They had like the energy density of a lead acid battery, mm -hmm. um, which for a capacitor is, that's a big deal. Um, but they used uh, ruthenium tantalum uh, oxide and there's a, I think at the time, there was maybe like one or two tons of ruthenium mined per year in the I world. See. So it's not a scalable solution. Yeah. Um, but there, I thought there could be some solid state solution, like just like you know, say using chip making equipment. That was gonna be the basic idea. So for Tesla, this $200 million acquisition seems like an incredibly great deal, especially knowing the potential of this DBE technology that Maxwell has developed. And I think that when they were talking about potential strategic partnerships and proofs of concept for their DBE, I think that they had Tesla in mind and they were actively working on the back end to prove out this technology so that Tesla could eventually acquire acquire them. Furthermore, I think that Maxwell's DBE technology does have immediate application for Tesla's lithium ion batteries, but long term, I think there's a very strong play for leveraging Maxwell's knowledge and expertise in supercapacitors to be able to eventually swap out lithium ion battery packs with supercapacitors. There's a whole host of reasons why supercapacitors make sense in terms of mobile transportation. Number one, they're far better in cold and hot temperatures with optimal performance temperatures between minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 149 degrees Fahrenheit. They also have a higher power density to store and deliver energy quickly, as well as being able to accept a high number of charge cycles. The only downside at the moment with current technology is that it doesn't have high energy density. So even though it can output high power, that power is not sustained over a long period of time. And that's really been the reason why these supercapacitors haven't reached 
the true potential that lithium ion has. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think that there is some near-term potential for this DBE technology to be worked into Tesla's current lithium ion battery packs? Do you think that we'll see something here in 2019 with the implementation of Maxwell technology? And what about the supercapacitors? Do you think that long-term, maybe five, 10 years from now, we may see supercapacitors as the power provider for electric vehicles? Sound off in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, hit the like button and I'll see everyone on the next video.